shouldn't be anyone there. G'day. Been expecting you. Me? Yeah, saw you a couple of miles back. Got the fire going. Thought you'd be here sooner. I nearly didn't see it. And he just did. Yeah, well, it's good to see you. Ed Mason. And Greg Preston. You Australian? <laughs> I give it away every time I open my mouth, don't I? Yeah, Trentham's a place. About 58 miles northwest of Melbourne. Long time no see. Don't suppose I'll ever see it again. Well, where are your friends? Hey. There are the marks of at least three horses back there in the wood. <laughs> Proper little Indian scout, aren't you? Mind you, you look more like Tonto and the Lone Ranger rolled into one with all that stuff on regular one man army. <laughs> Where's the war? Where are your friends? Matter of fact, they're hiding. No, not for the reasons you're thinking. Uh, so you scared the living daylights out of us. We don't carry stuff like that. It's too dangerous. You've got to be careful, Greg. All right, fellas, you can come out now. He ain't going to bite you. Hey, look, go easy, mate. You've got the guns. Now, we don't want any trouble. You want any of our gear, you just help yourself. We won't try and stop you. Now, go on, help yourself. Well, there's nothing I want. Just to be careful. Yeah, all right. Uh, well, you hold the barrel of that gun at my head and we'll keep chatting on. And anything upsets you, you pull the trigger, OK? Yeah, well, I don't have to be that careful. Okay. Well, whatever you think's a fair thing. Whatever makes you feel at ease. Oh, uh, what's wrong with your saddle? That's an old trick. Hey? I said that's an old trick. <laughs> You're incredible. You are more suspicious that... <laughs> Would I be correct in thinking that you've got a busted left stirrup? You might. Would I be equally correct in thinking that you'd like it mended? Dave, would you have a look and see if you can fix this chappy stirrup? Sure. Thanks. Now, look, if these lads of ours are upsetting you, and uh, I must admit they're an ugly-looking lot, uh, why don't you and me just sit down here by the fire and have a nice cup of coffee and a chat? Coffee? Yeah, well, you're right to be suspicious about that, but uh, it's real coffee. Found a couple of tins of it in the deserted house. Good to taste it again, even if it is only instant. There you go. It's a great smell. Yeah. How long since you've had some? Can't remember. Yeah. Hard to imagine a world without instant coffee, isn't it? Still, who could ever imagine? Sheep shearing, that's me, caper. Came over here about ten years ago. Worked for three months of the year, then spend nine months living it up. Mediterranean, America, South America, Caribbean. You name it, I've been there. Had a great time, fantastic. Then the big disaster struck, and that was the end of it. Still plenty of sheep to share. <laughs> Too many. But the high life's gone. Yeah, that's all gone for sure. What about your friends? Oh, we've met up over the last six months or so. None of us wanted to be tied down, didn't like the idea of this permanent settlement business. So we just move about the country offering our services to whoever needs them. Well, what kind of services? Oh, well, two of us are shearers. Dave over there can fix just about anything. Real dab hand with his fingers, if that makes sense. <laughs> Chris is an expert on roofing. Slate, thatch or turf. We break horses, do a bit of farming, a bit of bush plumbing, digging, carpentry. You name it, we can do it. There's always somebody who needs a bit of help, an extra pair of hands. But you don't want to be tied down? Uh, not if we can help it. And <laughs> hey, what about you? Uh, well, I've been with about 20 settlements since this all started. <laughs> oh, a bit of a glutton for punishment, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I suppose I am. But I just think that now, more than ever, we've got to be organised. We need cooperation and coordination. <laughs> oh, strike me. No, 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 no. It doesn't have to be as bad as it sounds. I just got back from Norway. You what? Yeah. Norway. Well, how in the hell did you get there? Oh, boat. Balloon first from our place in hey, Arab. You're that and... balloon fellow. You're the bloke that's floating all over the country. Well, I was one of them, yeah. Well, 
Strike me lucky we found Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> yeah, that balloon story's for real. Now, we kept hearing these rumours about some joker floating all over the place in the balloon. Sounded like a whole load of rubbish. They said he was uh, making notes on people's settlements, what they were growing and all that sort of stuff. He was supposed to come back, but he never did. Well, it sounded to me like that, uh, that Aztec legend, you know. So you are Quetzalcoatl. Oh, that's marvellous, eh? <laughs> hey, what happened? Where's Greg? Something must have cropped up. It doesn't have to be bad. It's not like Greg. He's made every rendezvous in the past. Well, you can try again tomorrow, or better still, wait here. He knows at least where to come. Yes, I suppose so. You see, Carlson had made Ooh. a list... The Norwegian. He'd made a list of all the places that he'd flown over. There are people, what they had, crops, their professions, and so on. And he had a plan of how we should organize ourselves. For our own benefit, and of course for his. So I went to Norway just to see how feasible it all was. And how feasible was it? Well, it'll work okay. But we've got to get ourselves organized here first. Do you reckon there's anything in it for us? Not in Norway, no. But you could be more than useful here in England. Doing what? Well, the same sort of thing you're doing now, but on a more organized scale. <laughs> oh, don't like that organized bit. What do you reckon, fellas? Any bright ideas? What's the woman's situation like in Norway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Chris for you, straight in with a deep philosophical question. <laughs> oh, Chris, you're better off here. Look, I can give you a list of about 20 places where your skills will be really appreciated. I promise you, you won't be tied down completely. I don't suppose one of you could drive a steam train, hmm? You must be joking. <laughs> so what are you doing now? I'm supposed to be getting in touch with a doctor a couple of days away. With a real one? He's real enough, yep. Yeah, how do you know about this doctor? Carlson's lists. You got these lists with you? They're over there in my saddlebag. Well, if we're gonna help out, um... Listen, I got a map in my gear. Uh... Bring us over another cup of coffee, Dave. Do you want another cup, Greg? No, I better not. Might want to steal the tin. <laughs> Just the one, Dave. And this time, uh, whack a spoon in it. Well, now, we're about here. You say this doctor yours is two days away? Eh? Yeah. You sure, Greg? No, I won't. Okay. What about you? <laughs> well, quite a quaddle. You were careful, but you weren't careful <coughs> enough. Now, let's get out of here. Let's we'll see how he goes. Try to tell him. I'll give him a little laugh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Damn, damn, damn. Oh, what's the matter? <laughs> These books, that's what's the matter. They're all written in Norwegian. Oh. Does that mean we're not going to be very rich and contented? Well, I don't know the flaming lingo, do I? Do you? Well, the captain's not going to be pleased with you. You killed a goose that lays the golden egg. Well, how was I to know he hadn't translated the rotten things? Perhaps he did it on purpose, just in case. Yeah, perhaps he was cleverer than I thought. <coughs> Hasn't done him much good, though, has it? Nor us. Still, there's always the girl. What girl? That Norwegian's daughter, Agnes. She might still be there at that bloke's place. What was it? Yeah, um... Slope, Slope and Spencer. Yeah. Uh, stuff written all over this, too. But it's in Norwegian. Right, I get mounted up. Hey, listen, uh, what about this doctor? Yeah, first He's... things first. We'll pick him up on the way back. And put that fire out, too. Uh, I rather fancy a Norwegian bird. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Hey, guy! Get a watch. Come on, you come back here, Dave, you son of a... How many times do I have to tell you, Jokers, the captain doesn't want any bickering? We've lost two men already fighting amongst ourselves. He's got a watch! 
You know the rules. Dave did it, he gets first choice. Now you be nice to him, and he might let you have the old one. Off you go, Dave, and don't ruin those new boots in that river. We'll catch it up later. Chris, you get back here. Do you? Yeah. No, no, what the hell? We can't afford to waste time waiting for him. Leave a sign on that tree. We'll just have to catch us up. Come on. Get up. Come on. I'll put this on. He does. Does he? Guess what? <sighs> Who's that with Greg? You don't need to say it. Why is he wearing Greg's coat? Why is he riding Greg's horse? Who the hell is he and who are his mates? Am I right? Something like that. <laughs> I know we're living in strange times, but your mate Greg would have to be the most suspicious bloke I've ever come across. And I have a suspicion myself that you're going to be just as bad. Seems they weren't too keen on his ideas. Didn't fancy losing their doctor for a start off, and who could blame him? So they set on him and beat him up. He copped a couple of stab wounds, but he managed to get away. Where did he meet up with you? Oh, we found him on the roadside a couple of days ago. Shocking state. Well, where is he now? Look, we sent him back to our place with a couple of the lads. Seemed the right thing to do. Now, don't you worry, kids. He's going to be all right. I'd have thought he would have... Yeah, he wanted to come here, but, uh, well, to be quite honest with you, I didn't think he was in any condition to make it, uh, so he lent me his coat and his horse and asked us to help out in any way we could. Oh, by the way, he asked me to pass these on to you too, whatever they are. Said they were too valuable to fall into the wrong hands. How are you feeling? Are you a lucky lad? That knife just missed the lung. Yeah, well, I feel as if it hit just about everything else. Who did it? Uh, someone called Mason. One of his friends. You know him? Ed Mason. He's an Australian. No, I never heard of him. My name's John Powell and this is Jim Irving. And Greg Preston. Why? No, they wanted some stuff I was carrying. They took it anyway. What sort of stuff? Oh, maps, lists of settlements. This place, amongst others. I was talking about this place when they knifed me. This place? 
Yeah, I was showing them where you were. Why I was coming. I suppose the temptation was too much. Temptation? Well, a list of all the flourishing settlements. Oh, they had crops, people, professions. <laughs> What's so flourishing about this place? Well, you know that better than I do. Who fixed me up? Dr. Adams. Who? Dr. Adams. Stephen Adams. Never heard of him. I struck you. Well, where's the doctor then? What doctor? Stephen Adams. This is Corson Farm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, there are 43 of you here. Stephen Adams is the... the leading light of your group, your spokesman. Oh, there's just him and me here. Well, where... where are all the others? What others? The other 40-odd people. And Stephen Adams. How long have you two been here? Since just after the death. Look, I know that this is the right settlement. I may make some mistakes, but I know I'm not wrong about this. Corston Farm, 43 people, and Stephen Adams. You must have had a bump on the head as well. We're the only two people here. We're the only two people who've ever been here. There's no Stephen Adams. Never has been. You get some rest. You sound as if you need it. Scattered around the area where he crashed. Fortunately, there was a dictionary, Norwegian English. Otherwise, we'd be no better off. <laughs> Don't suppose there'd be much good if you couldn't translate them. <laughs> well, then we didn't need them because we'd found Agnes. <laughs> I wish we could. Where is she? She was here, put the kettle on, and then she. Well, she's around somewhere. <laughs> Chris has always wanted to meet a Norwegian Sheila. <laughs> It came myself, actually. Why don't you lock the door? Did I? Must have been force of habit. Why? You don't want to leave us already. It's a nice view, isn't it? You're very sick. I shall have to tie you up. Or down. Where's the other guy? Working. And where's Adams? It... He's a figment of your imagination. I'd forget all about him if I were you. I might stop your recovery. How did you know that the knife just missed the lung? A medical book. There isn't a medical book there, I've looked. It's not the sort of thing that a layman would know, so how did you? You ask too many questions. Yes, well, you don't give me the answers I want. What we want and what we get are often two very different things. Are you Adams? You've really got a bee in your bonnet about him, haven't you? There is no Adams. Well, there was. Not here! Your Norwegian friend got it wrong. I never said he was Norwegian. Yes, you did. I never gave you his nationality. I just said that he came here by balloon. Do you miss Jenny? Well? I asked you if you missed your wife. 
and if he ever wanted to see her again. And what's that supposed to mean? More questions. I asked you if you missed your wife. And the kids. What are they called? John? Lizzie? <laughs> you talk in your sleep. Non-stop. About your wife, your family, your friends, and your Norwegian friend. Why should she hide from us? Who says she's hiding? Look, ask her, not me. Is, um, is Agnes the only Norwegian? Yeah. Anyone else who speaks or reads Norwegian? Just Agnes and Greg. Mm. Well, she'd better turn up pretty soon. Otherwise, somebody could be as indisposed as your mate, Craig. So you get her. Quick. if I was you. You've already been told you asked too many questions. If you're fit enough to snoop, you're fit enough to leave first thing in the morning. Now get back inside. Adams? Adams! How many times have you been told? Mind your own business. Now get on your horse and get out of here. You said you like Norwegian shearers. This one bites! <laughs> Lucky you! So does this one. <laughs> Let her go. What do you want with me? Well, first of all, I want to know why you ran off and hid. We were very worried. Worried about what? <laughs> worried about what might happen to your little friends if you didn't show up. You should always think of your friends. Greater love and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I've watched you and your friends about the place. Don't see any sign of love. You're thieves and murderers and liars. I don't believe Greg is at your camp. <laughs> well, where is he? Now, Agnes, we've got a little problem. Apart from being thieves, murderers and liars. <laughs> and that is that your dad's books are all written in Norwegian. None of us speak or read Norwegian. They're not available in a translated form, which is most inconvenient for those of us who like nothing better than to curl up in front of a cosy fire and read the likes of Ibsen and... Well, you know what I mean. So we would appreciate it 
No, no, I, I really mean it. We would appreciate it if... <laughs> now, I can see that you don't like us, which is sad. I can also see that you don't intend to help us, which is sad. <laughs> sad of stop all. It's all right. <laughs> See, we work for this gentleman called the captain. In many ways, he's got the same ideas as your dad. But he's more rigid in his ways. He doesn't like wasting time and energy. He's a great believer in discipline and strength. He also believes that sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind. Now, I believe that sometimes you have to be very cruel. Now, you sleep on it, and I want those translations in the morning. <laughs> I, I called it smallpox because I didn't know what it really was. And some of the manifestations were the same. Shivering, headaches, and the postules. The rate of infection seemed to be almost immediate. From contact to death, two weeks. Those that died quicker, bled from the most, from mouth, and had diarrhea, symptoms of typhoid. Anyway, it's deadly. I saw you burn the bodies. Did they all go down with it? All except those two outside. You tried to do what the disease didn't. You know, some brave new world I'd be making. The best laid plans. The disease came here because we wanted to put the Norwegians' plans into action. We started linking up, exchanging personnel. One of our own people came back feeling unwell, and there we were. It just went on and on. We tried quarantine. That didn't work. Because I thought it was smallpox. I used two people who were vaccinated just before the death. Didn't help them. Did they all know what they were in for? Oh, yes, I think I can say we accepted it. And no deserters? Just one. What happened? They hunted him down and killed him. Killed? Home courage à les autres. So you see, we can all do terrible things to each other for the best of reasons. We tried to keep ourselves to ourselves, but we needed food, we had to trade. No one found out. As far as I know, we didn't spread the disease. We hoped it would die with the winter coming, but... Why didn't one of those two just tell me? I didn't want you to know. I didn't want any panic outside. I wanted those two to have a chance of making it without any taint or suspicion they might be carrying the disease. Do you think any settlement would have welcomed them knowing what they'd been through and where they'd come from? How was it passed on? Breath, touch, clothing. I think even after we burned the bodies there was some risk of infection. Well, that doesn't leave me much chance, does it? You never know. You do. You know in the morning. If you shiver, headaches, vomit, and you've joined the club. If you bleed from the mouth, Oh no, you've got one week. But if you have none of those things, saddle up your horse and get the hell out of here. Don't worry about us. Let's think about yourself. Promise. Is, is there anything that I, I can do that, I mean, anything that's going to make any difference? Nothing. Just wait and pray. If I can remember the words. See you. I hope not.
sorry. For a moment I thought. Only natural. Now what? Now you have to face up to dying. Probably seems stupid to you. Don't feel any different from yesterday, but you know different. You've got two weeks, perhaps. I've got two days, perhaps three. You're lucky too. Oh, well, I'm beginning to be fed up with people saying that I'm lucky. Don't you think you died when they stabbed you? Not many people have more than one death. That hardly seems a reason for self-congratulation. Look, over there. See that card on the wall behind you? Turn it round. Blunt, isn't it? You put that up for the infected to see. It worked. We all have to go sometime. I always thought it was the way we went that mattered. Great poets say it in the greatest, simplest way. Nothing became his life so much as the leaving of it. You know what Gerald Manley Hopkins' last words were? I'm happy. Oh, so happy. No, they won't be mine. They might be. Well, didn't William Pitt ask for a pork pie or something? What did you ask for? A chance to wake up and find that I dreamt all of this. Yes. Yes. Someone once said that if you were afraid of death, the best thing to do was to think of how you'd like to die and then pray for it. But you're not a religious man, are you? I'm thinking of joining whichever group works the most miracles. No. I don't see you as a martyr. Soldiers' death might appeal to you. Leading your troops, falling in battle, posthumous VCs, brave. Stupid. Yes. That sounds like me. Except I've not so much been leading the troops as chasing around the country trying to find them. I'd have done better just to have stayed at home with Jenny and the kids. Are you going to miss them? Are you going to miss you? Oh, of course I'm going to miss them. But I'm the one that's going. And there are a lot of things that I'd have liked to have done. Like what? <laughs> oh, I was thinking about it last night. Sleep. Strangely enough. But I, I couldn't remember one moment of gentle tenderness with my wife. Why? Jenny. The mother of my son. I mean there were moments, but I just couldn't ever remember saying ever telling her that I loved her. It's stupid, I know, but I used to think about that when I was in Norway, and I always said that I'd make up for it when I saw her again. You haven't seen her. I don't think she needed to be told. Oh, perhaps not. Oh, God, I'd have liked her. I don't like the idea of just sitting around here waiting. You don't have to. You mean that I could go home? No, I meant quite simply, you don't have to wait around here. You've got two weeks to do something. I could pay a visit to Mason and his friends. You don't look too happy about that. I'm a doctor, don't expect me to. They'll only be getting what they deserve. And your friends too? I can make sure I avoid them. Mason will have guards out. Yeah, but 
they'll be expecting the man who killed me. I'm wearing his clothes, I'll be riding his horse. That part shouldn't be difficult. All right, let's suppose you manage that. Then what? Then what I'd like to do is to go back to their camp and infect everyone from the captain downwards. And everyone else they might come in contact with, good or bad. I could always bring them here. To see you. Visit to the doctor. They won't have our discipline. What's to keep them here? You and me while we're alive. And those two outside. Don't you, t don't you think those two have gone through enough, done enough? Yes, I think they have. I think you all have. You made a great sacrifice. But if Mason and his gang get going, then there are going to be a hell of a lot of people who are going to be dead or miserable, and mostly innocent people. And the sacrifice you've all made is going to be pretty pointless. You realize you're sinking to their level. Everyone has a right to die with dignity, no matter what they've done. There's no other way. There are a hundred different ways, Greg. Not for me. Go on, ask them. Here, take this. It's not to threaten them with. It's a present. I've had it 20 years. It's been looked after. It's loaded. It works. I'd like you to have it. But if things get bad for you, you might want to... <sighs> Undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns. Puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. I don't want to fly anywhere. I want to travel slowly. I want to enjoy my death, taste it, savor it, experience it. I wish I'd known what it was like to be born. I'm going to know what it's like to die. Looking forward to it. Journey of discovery. Go on. Ask them. Then come and tell me what they say. Well, how are we this morning? In a more cooperative mood, I trust. Time's winged chariot and our own. Your little cart wait for only. A short time, yes or no? No. All right, send the kid out. <laughs> no, thanks, I've already got one. I want those notes translated. I'm not interested in free gifts. Look at it. Swiss made, anti-magnetic, shockproof and waterproof. But did the man it belonged to wasn't? Chris! Look at that. It's Dave's. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get it? From his dead body in the river, stripped, where Greg left him. He went from there to Adams and he'll be here soon with help. I told him once before he's a real glutton for punishment. And don't you look so pleased with yourself, sweetheart? You've just let the cat out of the bag and we'll be waiting for the cat. And thanks to you, we now know what he's going to be wearing. Dave's hat and Dave's horse. Is anyone with him? No. Lamp the slaughter. Shall we tell Mason? <gasps> Let's do it now, then tell it.
Hey! Damn it! Great! Wait a minute. Well, quite a quaddle back from the dead, eh? Well, if you want your men back from the dead, we'd better have a chat. Yeah, fair enough. What about? About me working for whoever it is you call the captain. <laughs> I'm serious. Great! Shut up! Now, don't be too hard on that. It's come as a bit of a surprise to all of us. Well, it's a surprise to me. That doesn't make it any less true. Greg, you know what these people are. How can you even think of working with I them? I told you to shut up once. I don't like him and I don't like his friends. I probably won't like the captain either. But if I can get what I want through them, then I'm prepared to put up with them. Do you really think they'll let you do what you want? They only want my father's books and the information in them. I mean it. I'll give you what you want if you'll just give me a chance to make you see things another way. But what about the people who have helped you? Your friends, the family, the kids? I'm not interested in the family or the kids. Tell them that yourself, John! Just stay where you are! Go on! Tell him that you don't care. Tell him that you're going to go off with these people. Greg, he's your... He's mine, nothing! He's a stupid, useless kid! I haven't got the time to waste on him. And what about Paul? He's inside. You're not going to turn his future over to them. They're not interested in people. Do you know how many people are alive at Adams? Three. Your father said it was a perfect example for the future. Well, do you know why there are only three? Because they were soft like you. Because they dithered and listened to other people's opinions. Well, that may have been all right before the death, but it won't work now. Whether we like it or not, it's going to need men like him and the captain to get things straight. Greg, you know that is. Now stay true. where you are! Oh, no! oh, oh, Greg! No! Oh, no! That's typical. You don't listen. You've got to make gestures. You haven't got a hope in hell by yourselves. I'm fed up carrying you. If he'll take me, I'm going with him. As far as I'm concerned, you can all rot in hell. All right, Greg will get packed up if I can have me merry men back. Done. Uh... You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Just bored. <laughs> <laughs> Bright dear, you two turned out to be. You're about as weak as his mob. Well, what's the point of calling him if he wants to join us? I suppose you thought of that while he was jumping you, eh? Well, save us a lot of bother. You know, she had sheep with more brains than you've got. Listen, I thought you he thought. was got to... You never thought. He's got no intention of helping us. What was all that about, then? He just wants to con us off the place. Oh, that guy, he shot him. Didn't kill him, though, did he? No, he's laying it on as thick as he can. I could get him now. No, 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 we'll play him along a bit. Find out what he's really up to. We can always get rid of him and come back later. Can I at least pass on a message to your wife, or does she matter less than your son? You can tell her that I love her. <laughs> you can say that I'm following in the footsteps of Paul. Oh, I'm sure that'll be a great comfort to her. I'm sorry about your arm, Jack. But you've got to learn to do as you're told. When I say stay away, I mean stay away. So, goodbye. A special Norwegian goodbye to you. Ye are copper shock. Great! John, come here. But he's going. Stay here, they'd move. Had a blinding revelation on the road to Damascus, did you? So Paul became a Christian, not a bandit. He has smallpox. Greg has smallpox. That was what he said. It wasn't goodbye. He just said, I have smallpox. Oh, my God.
Is that it? Yep, that's Adam's place. Okay, Greg. Just a precaution. You've got to be careful. Great bit of shooting back there. Yeah, it's a great gun. I aimed at least ten feet to his right. <laughs> give, uh, give a nosebleed. I have. 